The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 25th. Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two-by-four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I will go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in. Right now, it's just fine, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that heading, just put radio show question. And, of course, inside the Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous and fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trade up 69 points at 21,852. S&P is up about nine at 2447. NASDAQ is flat or back a point. Russell's up three points. Semis are back five. Gold is up five. Silver's up eight pennies. Lights we crude up a quarter. Uh, you've got the AutoZone leading the charge up by 23 bucks or nearly 5%. O'Reilly Automotive up eight. Chipotle up seven. Adams Pharmaceuticals up six. Splunk is up five bucks. Autodesk up five. To the downside, it's Alta Beauty Salon. Not too beautiful today. Down 19 bucks or nearly 9%. Price on off 13, about seven tenths of a percent. Intuitive Surgical down 11, a little over 1%. Broadcon down 4% or 10 bucks. Um, Domino's Pizza eh, giving a discount today off $5. Yeah, I think they got the $5 pizzas. Now they got $5 off the price of their stock. It's trading out at 178.31. So what do you want to start with? I don't see any requests out here, any emails. So let's start with, hey, what are the markets doing, Steve-O? And let's start by taking a look at the S&P 500. So, and we'll, we'll break this down a couple of different ways. First is the chart of light sweet crude, but let's not do that. Let's go take a look at the, the S&P 500. Here we go. And what we're going to see is that what price did so far today is nothing more than test resistance. Stevie's red line. You got to like that red line, huh? It is a butte. Now, yesterday we spent quite a bit of time talking about that red line. You can see how this is acting as resistance. The real meaning behind it is it's just trying to stall right here, probably just like that little Hurricane Harvey out there. I heard that's going to stall and dump a bunch of rain. Well, here's the hurricane inside the S&P 500, and the stalling point happens to be about 2452.57. Yeah, it got up slightly above that. That's not a big deal. But you can see how this has really been a level of resistance ever since that high on August the 8th out here. Now, just a stalling pattern so that that bottom panel, that price oscillator, can make its way down to zero. A nice big down day would accomplish that. So even if we do get a down day, don't let that get your skirt in a tizzy. Because what we really need to see is then once that occurs, what happens with Stevie's red line and price once they meet up? Is it a kiss and tell, kiss and go, a kiss and adios amigos? Uh, which kind of kiss is it going to be? I don't know the answer. But you and I do want to know the answer because that will go ahead and give us a clue as to what the markets want to do next. At this stage, just running right into a level of 
resistance, Stevie's red line. Does that mean the market is bearish? Well, if we go take a look at market breadth, specifically for the S&P 500, let's do that. And here we're going to go ahead and take a look at four different time frames uh, for the market breadth, utilizing the uh, great tool uh, by our uh, folks at the TAS Market Profiles. Right now, what I'm showing you is the 60-minute chart. In this case here, when the green line is above the red line, that would be bullish market breadth because that says we have more issues trading above the top of the box versus the bottom of the box. Now, this is coming to you, this data, live as of 1 p.m. As of 1 p.m., for example, if we were to look at that all 500, well, it's not 500 issues inside the uh, S&P 500, uh, what we would be seeing is 253 of them above the top of their market profile, so bullish, and 104 below the market profile. So on a 60-minute time frame basis, the message here is bullish. We can go take a look at the two, uh, the four-hour chart out here, 240 minutes. You're going to see the same type of thing. In this case here, you had a bullish crossover. That came in at about um, August 22nd at about 8 o'clock in the morning. As we speak right now, 255 above, 73 below. Let's not stop there. Let's go take a look at the daily chart. Daily chart had a bullish crossover when? Today. However, price would have needed or does need to close above Stevie's red line. If price closes above Stevie's red line today, the message is clear with regard to market breadth, with regard to breakout potential. Forget about getting that price oscillator down to zero. That is another possible outcome. Do I think that's what's going to occur? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm open for that possibility. But at this stage of the game, we have to go with what we do know. And at this stage here, Stevie's red line continues to act as resistance. Nonetheless, you have a bullish market breadth indicator coming to us from our TAS market breadth profiles 200 and well I'm sorry 158 above the box 101 below well how about the weekly time frame out here guess what if we take a look at weekly and if things I don't know where we're going to end this week but if we were to close the doors right now we've got a bullish market breadth crossover this week 169 above 150 below so what does that then tell us we'll come back here to the hourly chart out here what does that tell us the market is just chopping away bulls have no edge or a slight edge bears have a slight edge as well what else do we know about the s p 500 out here well if we pull this back on our screen we know that we've got a nice bullish bottom out here at the completion of an a to b equals cd uh, if we take a look at that pattern that looks like this so the old buy the d point that actually formed right here on august the 21st as you know subscribers and i went ahead and bought that we then went ahead and sold into the august 23rd time frame we're just sitting here at neutral waiting for the market to really give us our next clue out here I want to see what happens at that zero line. It is extremely important. We know that we broke a swing point. Whenever you break a swing point here, you've got to be careful because it can be, and when I say here, I'm referring to the trading session of August 17th. It can, doesn't have to, but it can start to lead to lower highs and lower lows out there. So we just need some proof. Stevie's red line would be that one piece of proof that would go ahead and take the S&P 500 back to bullish, probably back up to the highs out there. We don't have that message as a 114. So what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and make a margarita. Sit back and enjoy the show. Steve Rode, TFN. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. 
With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 67. S&P is up 9. So uh, James uh, writes in. I don't know where James is from, but uh, he says, hey, Steve, really like your show. I really like that you're listening to the show. What do you think of Intel, INTC? I'd like to start a position for medium to long term. Thanks. So let's go take a look at Intel here. We'll look at uh, Intel a couple different ways, actually. Let me come over to the old three time frame chart out there, INTC. And uh, let's start off by taking a look at uh, this chart right here. Now, we talk about that price oscillator. We talk about that zero line. And Intel, uh, and thank you, uh, James, it's kind of like, uh, the, how do you cue it up like this? Um, and what we can see here in that bottom panel, we're sitting right at zero. We got to zero maybe yesterday. We formed that little doji candle out here. You can see that my red line level is 35 and a quarter. Here's what we know about Intel. Is it a buy right now? If I were to try to find a pattern, for you that says, well, maybe um, the only thing that I can come up with is this TD setup nine count out here. But as far as I'm concerned, that's not good enough. So uh, I just have to say here, no, and it's especially not good enough right now while we've got this price oscillator sitting at zero. What you should see occur, James, over the coming days here is we should see Stevie's red line and price catch up with each other. If it's a buy and you're talking about medium to long term out here, you can afford to wait and afford to pay more because what you're doing is you're just paying for information out here. If, in fact, we were to see the two meet up, price and my red line, and price were to close above the red line, then you would have your signal to buy or you should have your signal to buy. I really want to see where Stevie, where the price oscillator is at out here. But if it's above zero and it's above Stevie's red line, we then have a rising price oscillator above zero. And you may have an A to B equals C to the upside out here. So that's what the daily chart is showing us. Now, I know you're talking about intermediate term time frame out here. And if we take a look at the weekly chart, what we're going to see out here is right now inside of uh, Intel, it's trading below its weekly profile. So the bottom of its box, 
out here. I don't know where it's going to end today, but if it closes today below 34.90, that's also confirming the message, hey, James, you better wait. Now is not the time out here. Because maybe what price is going to end up doing is coming back and uh, testing the lows out here from the week of June 26 in the 33.34 level. May even be trying to bust that level out in order to form an A to B equals CD to the downside. We won't go to that projection just yet because it hasn't occurred. But what we do know is Closing below 34.90, not a good thing out here. It's not giving you the uh, buy signal. Now, the positive about price and um, and my red line uh, catching up with each other really comes to us from the daily chart. So you have a brand new daily box that formed right now, today is the day and we can see that the box itself has a bullish structure. I know you're saying, oh, what the heck? does that mean out here? Well, if we turn off price and we just look at the profile lines, you will see that this profile, I'll just simply go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead so you know exactly what I'm looking at for all of you watching out here. It's what's inside that rectangular box out here. It's those three blue lines. And notice how the center line, it's not in the center, it's closer to the bottom. 34.77 versus the bottom at 34.57 versus the top at 35.54. So this says that in this price range of 34.57, that it's really buyers that have control of Intel. Now, I don't know whether they do or they don't. That's what the message of this is. And it does suggest to you and I that price could run up to 35.54. So if Intel starts moving to the upside, don't think that you've missed out on it. Think to yourself, hey, I'm waiting for price to go test Stevie's red line. And then we're going to wait to see what happens then out here. So and likewise. A bearish message comes from the mere fact that you have a new profile that formed and it's got a bullish structure. And if price were to close below 34.57, boy, that's giving you another message as well. It's not a bullish message. That is for certain. So, James, I say just sit on those hands, keep watching the charts and wait for that bullish signal to occur. And thanks for listening. We've got kind of a question inside the Tiger's Den, I believe it is, with regard to gold. And the question is, what conditions do you want to see in order to rebuy gold? So let's go take a look at it. So speaking of Stevie's red line, today was a test of Stevie's red line, a bullish test in one sense of another of Stevie's red line. Now, if you look at the price oscillator here for gold, we're taking a look at the December contract for gold. You can see that uh, it's got a positive print, 9.01 right now. And you can see that today there was most definitely a push to the downside. But you can see that price, because the body of the candle is truly the essence of price. Those wicks, those shadows, upper or lower, uh, whatever you want to refer to them as nothing more than just the extreme emotion. We're really interested in the body of the candle. And we can see that as long as gold is trading above 1293.20, it is short term bullish. So uh, Z, with regard to you taking uh, short term long trades in gold, buying some of those dips, man, I'm totally on board with that. There's nothing in here from a short-term trader's standpoint, to suggest doing anything otherwise. Of course, when you get price below that red line, it says hey, it's kind of like a game of musical chairs. But you have to go with the flow. And right now, the flow is still from a short-term trading standpoint that it is buyers that are the ones in control. Unfortunately, what buyers have not been able to do is get across Stevie's horizontal red line. And that is an important level of resistance. If, in fact, we see price get above that, that's going to be the high from his candle session right here, the trading day of April the 18th. Ideally, it's really even the day before that. If, in fact, price breaks out above that, then we've got your good old consolidation breakout. And as long as price stays above that, you've got one heck of a nice measured move out there. I won't do the measured move on this chart, but that is one of the things that I want to see in order to be able to go back to a long position inside of gold. We also know that with regard to the market profiles, and we just spent some time take a look at those market profiles uh, inside of, uh, inside of uh, Intel out here, you can see that price continues to get deflected on a closing basis on a weekly chart. 
at the top of that box, 1293.60. And that box has a bearish structure. So closing above 1293.60 would give you an inkling that maybe it's going to go ahead and bust out the top of that range. Uh, but we don't have that. We're just trading really right on it right now. And I'm not talking about breaking it by 10 cents or 20 cents or 30 cents or something like that out here. So there's no clear indication to me that gold is getting ready to bust out those highs. The move, we talked about a measured move out here. The move is so strong that one can sit back and actually wait. If you're not in the trade, if you're in the trade, there's no reason necessarily to sell, so to speak. If you're not in the trade, there's no reason to get in the trade right now. You're too close to resistance to do that. If it does break, though, this is one of those momentum trades where what we know is the measured move, I think, takes us up towards that 1400 level because we just take that consolidation area. We add the uh, value of that consolidation area to the top of the box and it gets us into you know I don't know, 1380 1390 somewhere right around there which would be one heck of a nice move we don't have that yet we wait why else should we wait with regard to gold out here you know the answer and you know it is nothing more than that good old Japanese yen and we take a look at what it's doing with regard to Stevie's red line it might be saying a Lee Corso. It might be saying not so fast. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. So, so the other part of that question was, uh, what's the signal to you that the major move higher occurs inside of gold? So it's going to be a breakout of that consolidation pattern. That, and what I would also want to see is I'd like to see the yen breaking out as well. Because, you see, the yen is uh, running up into resistance, okay, the, the horizontal red line. Uh, but today, right now, it looks like we're going to see a second day in a row. It's not over yet with yen futures rejecting Stevie's red line. In other words, trading down below it. So that's going to or that should keep uh, pressure on uh, gold. But boy, if we see a breakout above that horizontal line inside the yen, we see a breakout inside of gold. I'm not going to fight that trend. That's exactly the piece of information uh, that I uh, need out here. And you know, subscribers and I, we took a long position, newsletter wise, personal wise, right here on July 11th. And I did that because of that little key reversal, bullish engulfing uh, day that took place on uh, July 11th. So we bought in nicely at the bottom. We got out towards this resistance area. And I'm really glad that we did because this chop sideways out here, eh, it, it's just not accomplishing anything. In fact, we took that money and we went long the uh, NASDAQ and the S&P 500 for a day and a half and made some additional shekels out there. So I'm just going to wait. I'm not going to go ahead and call this bearish just yet uh, but I certainly am not going to call this bullish action either it just uh, I just don't see it I call this kind of nervous Nelly sideways action and I don't really want to participate in that and I'll be happy to go ahead and get my ticket stamped if in fact gold can go ahead and break out so I don't see any other questions I hope that answers your question um, Mr. Z inside the uh, Tiger's Den you know if we take a look at the rest of the indices across the uh, group out here you're gonna see really the same type of thing going on let me change over to a different workspace out here same thing going on meaning just really tests of uh, Stevie's red line all over the place. Here's a NASDAQ composite. Now, granted, NASDAQ composite has formed a nice little Gartley buy pattern. You can see that colored in here. You've got the signals. The only signal that we're looking for here is a close above right now today is priced at 62.99. If we were to get that, that would be telling us to just definitely go to the long side. And we'll go through the other indices, but first we're going to go out to California and speak with our friend Garo. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Very well. How about you, sir? Very good. Getting ready to, you know, these weekends, they come around so quickly, don't they? Yes, yes. Yeah, this is <laughs> life, life. This is life that's passing by. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's faster and faster each day. So, so I know yeah. as a part of your life, you're taking a look at uh, SNAP, uh, S N A P, and uh, remind everybody what it is that you're taking a look at here. I know you were looking at that 50-day uh, simple moving average as deflecting price, which it has done thus far. Right now, that's price is about 15. Uh, what was that price at? Uh, 1509 is what I've got it at at the moment. But a refresh for everybody what it is you're looking at and how I can help you. Uh, still, do you believe that it's going to go up to 1636 that we talked about uh, three days ago? Or it's going to roll right here at 50 days down to sure. $9. Yeah. So what we don't have here is, uh, and I'm going to pull up another chart, I don't have any indication here yet that it's ready to roll to the downside. You did get a nice little bearish reversal candle yesterday. So your thought that that 50-day is a key level has proven that point to you and with the follow-up yesterday's uh, bearish engulfing candle. But what it hasn't been able to do is it has not been able to get down below the top of this Taz Daily profile. And that is priced at 1440. If it were to close below 1440, then I would say, OK, this is telling you and I that it wants to go down and maybe explore the 1335 area. Maybe it wants to get down to wherever your next uh, um, uh, parabolic SAR dot might form. But right now I would I would call it inside the 1335 level. So short of that taking place, yeah, I still see this uh, being able to get up into that gap from July 11th, the high of which is 16, uh, actually 1636, you know, yes. is the number, or the low of uh, July 10th. So sort of kind of like the markets where it's just a little a little bit of sideways action, kind of the same thing inside of uh, Snap out here. I st there would still be, in the case of Snap, what Snap may have actually done is actually – 
is in the process of truly coming off of the bottom. And the reason that I say that is that low that it made out here back on the trading day of uh, August the 14th was a classic type of bottoming signal where price had stretched so far to the downside without the less relative strength, in this case here, less relative weakness. And you had a nice bullish engulfing candle and you've got price above uh, my red line pulling back to 1335 uh, might be the C point of the A to B equals CD to the upside, even on the pullback. But there's not anything today, Garo, that tells me that this thing wants to pull back other than your inclination about the 50 day and yesterday's bearish engulfing, but it would need to close below 1440 in order for me to, to jump on, on board with that conclusion. So you don't think this is going to go to a single digit? You think that on August the 14th, that was the bottom of the bottoms, and, and uh, that, uh, what was the low of that? 1128 was the bottom already. It hit that. It will, we'll never see that again. Well, I, I'm not one to say never. What I am, what I what I am willing to say is, from a probability standpoint, that was a good bottom. That that was how you like to see a bottom formed in an in a, in any type of equity for whatever t or symbol, whatever it is that you're trading on any time frame. You like to see things get stretched, and you like to see it do with less relative energy, and you like to then see a bullish reversal candle. In this case here, it was both the bullish engulfing, it was a key reversal, it was everything. So it was the, it's the best signal that we have seen in snap short trading history to communicate to you and I that it is a bottom. The way that we'll know that and that we can answer that, let's assume that 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 you're absolutely correct. That 50-day is a huge deflection point. Yesterday's candle is another signal that it wants to trade lower. As long as it doesn't take the lows out of August 14th, then yeah, good good indication that that was the uh, good bottom. And then when we start to see uh, higher lows and higher highs, then you and I will know that for sure. So, and I, yeah. you're thinking of Snap from a longer. I think I, did we have that conversation? You're looking at Snap as being. From a long-term standpoint, uh, I, don't, I don't know that's how you're going to trade it, but I thought you had alluded to something like that, or was that somebody else? No, not me, though. I never no. think long-term. My long-term is one hour. That's it. After long, uh, uh, that is my long term is one hour in any trade, in any trade. Uh, but uh, uh, what I'm seeing, uh, Snap is in single digit, eight or nine dollars. It is going to hover there for a while until he makes money. If he doesn't make money, it doesn't matter what it is. It's going to go uh, go lower and lower, like uh, the tweet, uh, like Twitter or whatever. Something it never, <laughs> it never grow. You see. Uh, the, that, that's my that's my personal idea. It doesn't worth a penny, but that's that's what I see after all these years of trading. If the stock doesn't make money, it doesn't matter what it does. If it, if it's a gold mine, it still is no good. But uh, you, did you see that TAL uh, that that we talked about the shooting star? It was a shooting star. Did you see today how it went down? I, can you hold on through this break here? What was the ticker there. symbol? What was the ticker symbol on that? T A L Tom uh, Tom Apollari. Okay, okay, we'll be right back. We'll be right back with the girl. Stay tuned, folks. Uh, Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll look at T A L. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade C H A U or C H A D. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The TAS Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the TAS Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the TAS Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, the 800th edition of The Gold Report will be published next Monday. To celebrate the last 15 and a half years of calling the gold market, I'm doing a special promotion. You can receive 60 weeks of The Gold Report for only $600. That is $10 a week, which is a savings of 50% off the regular price. If you want to understand the entire supply and demand equations that move the gold market, including where the XAU, HUI, and mining equities are looking to trade, if you want to understand the correlation between the dollar, the yen, the South African rand, bonds, and gold, the gold report is for you. I'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop for each equity, ETF, future, or option trade. The gold report is a long-term newsletter with a focus on building real wealth to a successful portfolio of gold and silver equities. You can take advantage of this special promotion until August 27th. That's 60 weeks of the gold report for $600, which is a 50% savings. Go to the front page of TFNN.com or call 877-518-9190 and order now. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're on the line with Garo in California. We're taking a look at Tal Ed Group. I took some of theirs, T-A-L. And when Garo and I first spoke about this, it was on this trading session right here. I believe it was Tuesday, August the 22nd. At that stage, we weren't sure what type of candle was going to form out there. It turned out to end up being just a nice little doji candle. But on the very next trading session, so on Wednesday, is when Garo got that little shooting star. And then, Garo, there was some nice little foul through, bearish foul through, if we will, uh, yesterday when it formed a little bearish engulfing candle. So we know that this level here in the 3220-ish range is a significant area of support. Boy, this thing uh, fell out of bed today. So I see where it traded down to your blue dot yesterday. Tell everybody what you did today. Today I shorted at 10 minutes. Most of the time I shorted at 10 minutes. The okay. 10 minutes, the lower dot was $29.39. 29 39 that was the time to short it. Because in the morning it came down drastically. I couldn't short it at any time frequency. The only thing that it signaled me was 29.39 at 10 minutes, and I shorted 2,000 shares. And still great. I have it. Great, great, still great. I, but I'm going to get out of it very soon because it's already curving at the bottom. The 10 minutes, the MACD is crossing each other and so on. So I'm going to get out after I hang up and so on. But uh, and the daily chart, and the daily chart, you'll see that when it hit the, the dot at twenty eight dollars and ninety four cents. Yeah, yeah, I saw is, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there it is. And it came and it stopped at twenty one day. Now it's right at that juncture, at that intercept of twenty one day uh, simple moving average. If it closes below than that. Then, uh, then it's a have a nice day. It's going to go to a 50 day, 2474 in that area. Perfect, perfect. So, so you're going to wait for a price to get below. You're going to wait for price to get below the 21 day simple moving average before you short it again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. If I if I don't if it doesn't go below than that and it doesn't close at the end of the day, no. Then tomorrow it may roll up. It will, but it has to go there and it has to die there. It has sure. to. Exhaust there at below than that, and it probably I would say two to three days is going to hover around 21 days, and then it's going to go down at 
50 day and there yeah. that's where it's going to stop and then it's going to roll because MACD and stochastic uh, has long ways on a daily chart has long ways to go to zero so oh, it does. I think yeah. I think this one is a, is a goner towards the 50 day but uh, I make very good money out of this TAL uh, snap and uh, chipotle that is oh, that's great. Yeah, that is my three favorite money maker of the. But I appreciate very much for your time and your ideas, sir. It's always been number one for me. Always, I always listen to you. Even though if I don't call you, Steve, I always listen to you. I appreciate well, it for your all the time and the knowledge and that much effort that you're putting for all your uh, listeners. Well, girl, you touched my heart. Thank you very much. And everybody in the den is pulling for you. They're glad about that trade. They're saying, "Go cash in." Go cash in now. So <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have, a, yes, have a great weekend, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. You, Bye you bet. That was Garo in California. And as uh, John says in the den, that is a beautiful thing out there. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, uh, yeah, let me go real quick to the phone just to see here if I've got any emails, just to cover that before the weekend is out. And I think we were taking a look at some other indices out here. We were. So, uh, yeah, I don't see anything else. And with regard to the under, other indices, you're going to see they're really all doing about the same thing. Now, the interesting thing here, and I don't know if anybody caught this just yet, and I'll look at the oh, sorry, I'll look at the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, that was a request. But has anybody looked at the transports today? So I just throw that out there. But I have a request to go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the, the U.S. 100 inside of the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, what John is pointing out to us here, I believe, this is the center portion of the uh, chart, is just this little nice little trend line resistance where prices run right up into it. That's coming off of the high that it formed back on August the 8th. So that's that center panel, that green line. Now, the other tool that we want to go take a look at inside of that chart is that today, its price oscillator may be turning up. I don't know how it's going to close. If it closed here right now, I would say, yes, John, that's the trend line resistance. You're getting a signal here that this is trying to turn up. This is the top 100 uh, uh, stocks inside the U.S. stocks inside the New York Stock Exchange. So this would be a bullish signal out here. And then the only thing that I can do uh, out here to try to get either bullish or bearish confirmation is go back to the entire New York Stock Exchange and take a look at the advanced decline oscillator reading or the summation index one and the same. And you can see right now today, as we speak at 147 in the afternoon, this thing is above zero. That's that little blue line. You'll, you'll notice it inside the summation index where you see that it's turned green out here. And so when the summation index turns up, that's just really it's a it's a trend type tool. It's a darn good one with regard to a trend type tool out there. And so the New York Stock Exchange and the larger group, you know, which has all these closed end bond funds in there. So it kind of maybe distorts it a bit is giving you a bullish signal. That's after a nice little Gartley buy pattern. So New York Stock Exchange has a beautiful Gartley buy pattern. In fact, if you notice how the bottom was also formed here, you had that nice divergence with price moving lower, but the advanced decline oscillator seeing, no, I don't think so. Now, it wasn't until this trading day right here on August 22nd when you had that nice little Four River Morning Star pattern. So you got a bullish pattern, which is the Gartley buy. You got the bullish signals. And now today, the advanced decline oscillator reading as of 148 is above zero. That's a bullish indication out here as well. And then, so back to the transports. Then, it, you know, this is this is where the markets are are giving us truly conflicting signals. I think you just still wait on that S and P 500, um, you know, signal there. Even the Russell 2000 is is kind of giving us a signal. It says uh, maybe bottom. Here's a Gartley buy pattern right now inside of the Dow transports out here, it, depending on where this day's session ends. But you can see the A to B equals CD to the downside. You can see a nice bull sash candle. Price oscillator is below zero, but it's turning up right now because price is above Stevie's red line. And if it closes like that, and for those of you that believe the transports lead the indices, well, that's what the message here is communicating to you. It is also saying not so fast. Now, you want to see where the day's closes on this. But let's face it, it is the strongest index inside of the markets right now. I believe it's up one and, uh, what is it, uh, one and six tenths percent to the upside. That's the transports out here. 
Is that uh, any, in any event? That's uh, and I mentioned the Russell. Here's the Russell 2000. Also formed a nice little uh, Gartley buy pattern. Price moving lower, less relative energy out here. You have a hammer candle that occurs a couple of days ago. You get follow through on the next session. That follow through created a Four River Morning Star today. Right now, it's trade above Stevie's red line, 1374. So the question that the market is asking you, not me, the market is asking you right now, a couple of the weak links inside the market have just flipped the switch on to bullish. They've just flipped the switch to bottom has formed out there. So what are you going to do? If you're a grizzly bear, you still have to ask yourself the question, why? Steve Rhodes with TFM. We get back from this break. Let's go take a look at the euro and anything else in two minutes that we can do. We'll be right back. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market safe emerging currency CD from Everbank. This three year US dollars nominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, two in the two-minute drill here, we've got really two questions. One was to take a look at the uh, euro for Danny in Atlanta. And the easiest thing to do when we take a look at the euro is first drop back, take a look at the weekly pattern. And what we know about the euro is that it broke through a uh, long-term consolidation. Now, we can say that the consolidation really began back in January of 2015. We see the clear break of it back here in July of 2014. Again, a weekly chart that we're looking at. And what that provides you and I with, as long as price stays, 
days above this consolidation is in fact a uh, longer term measured move price projection that would in fact take the euro up into approximately the 127 level out here now that's what it says on a weekly basis of course that'll put a world of hurt into the u.s dollar index since that's the largest component of it if we take a look at the daily chart out here, uh, we know that uh, here's where resistance is established. Just looking at the uh, bearish reversal candle, so, so bearish engulfing candle occurred on August 4th. That says it's really the high of the highest session that it engulfed. That says not until, from a daily perspective, a close above eight, uh, the August 2nd high. Uh, what is that price point? Uh, real quickly here, that is one one nineteen one one point one nine one. Danny, if there there's a close above that or any time there's a close above it it's ready to resume its move up to the larger uh, up to the larger price projection area there was a request to also go take a look at the spot volatility index I think we can do that quickly here it's not really providing you or I with uh, a lot of a clue out here I say that at the moment, but quite frankly, if it closes below 11.46 today, that's a 50-day exponential moving average. You know how Garo likes his 50-day simple moving average line? Well, Stevie is in love with the 50-day exponential moving average on the spot volatility index because if it closes below that level, 11.46, it's also giving you a bullish message. That would say Sunday, Monday, he should see these trade higher. Folks, thanks so much for being here this week. Today... We'll see you on a beautiful Monday. Look, if you're in the hurricane uh, area, you know, just be safe. Don't do anything uh, foolish out there. And uh, we'll see you come uh, Monday, rain or shine. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.